Well, good evening, YouTube. So today's little project is to do a custom paint job on an Xbox One control pad. Um, so the tools that you're going to acquire, or that I use to do this, because this isn't the controller I painted, by the way. This is the next controller to be painted. Um, the tools that I needed was um, your torque, your torque drives. You need a an eight and possibly a six, depending on how far you want to mod. You need color spray paint, whatever color you want. A primer and a finisher, a spray paint. You need a sanding block. You can either use one of these, not too abrasive though, because you don't want to scratch the hell out of your controller. Or what I used is just what you use to wash up with. You will need some masking tape. Um, or I used decorating tape for my project. You will need a wherever I put it, a crafting knife, a pencil, and as I'm going to be putting stencils on my controller, <coughs> I used my mobile phone or you can use a tablet and I will show you what I've done later on in the video to explain that. So first of all what you will need to do is you will need to take your controller apart and I'm not going to show you how to take these apart because there's, there's plenty of videos out there that show you but maybe one day I'll put one on the channel but there's five screws holding your back piece and your front piece on and these screws, there's, I might just point it out because that light ain't going to do nothing. There's one there, which is there, in there, down there. There's one at the top, there. So that's two. And there's two more under this other grip and if you take your battery apart yes this one is plugged in because I am in a party with some friends while I'm doing this video but if you take that off underneath your guarantee sticker which is there right in the centre there's another one and these are all T8s I will warn you though you will void your warranty or guarantee if it's still under, if you pierce this. So this one's been, this controller's been taken apart already because I have replaced some bits on it um, because I had some spare elite controller pieces. So um, this was a standard controller, but um, I changed for the magnetic D-pad, the magnetic thumbsticks and I changed the top plate to silver I am eventually going to change these over to the silver the same as these because it will go nice with the paint job that I'm doing on this control pad but I will leave that for another video what I'm going to do with this controller yes yeah, so I'm going to change these to the silver um, so pretty much oh sorry then they are T8s and this is a controller that I'm already working on because I'm replacing the thumbsticks I'm just waiting for them to come on from Amazon um, if you do want to modify your buttons as well your buttons and change your LED or this you ain't going to do it for this actually there's screws in these PCBs and these are T6s I don't have a Talk 6 
for some reason my torx my torx set only goes down to well it only goes to an eight and then they just get bigger and bigger but when you take your controller apart also make sure you get some duct tape and just make sure that you duct tape your um, shockers in you know the um, rumble motor things so you don't um, so you can flip it around and whatever not so when you do have the back off and the front off you are ready to start spraying so we will go through a few spraying tips so when you've got your front plate <coughs> this is a, <coughs> a front plate to a um, an elite controller like any plastics when it's manufactured it's sprayed with a finisher so for you to get a nice coat on this you're going to need to just rough it up a little bit so as i said you can either use your sanding block or you can use your um washing up sponge and pretty much all you would do is you would just you just give it a good old rough up and you see it change color you won't see in this video because of the lighting but you see it go from a black to like a, a whitey colour and then once done, once make sure you get all the edges as well because if you are going to start getting peeling it's going to be from the edges so once you've done that to the front and the back and any other bits and bobs you want to spray um, because obviously you can spray the um, you can take your d-pad off you can spray that um, you can take this front clip here off which is um, probably not the trickiest thing to do um, cool. pretty much what you have to do is there's some little clips that are in there this lighting's terrible I do apologise but if you see those little clips there and there they clip onto some little things so what you need to do is you need to get your finger under them push the button in get the back and pull and that bit there comes off as well so you can spray paint that obviously unless you use if you're using rechargeable batteries you probably can't do this but um well you can't do it but you'd um you would spray your your battery case as well. So now you've got all the bits. Now you've got all the bits and that ready. And with a little bit of a sanding and a little bit of a wash afterwards to get all the dust off, you're ready to you're ready to spray. So spraying, a lot of people now do it. A lot of people don't. But um, pretty much, if, you, if you've got your project there, which we can use this face plane for this front example, yeah, that's in with you. You don't just go and spray it in one place. So, what you do is whatever side you want to start from you start about to about here which is what I don't know six six inches away from your project and then you will spray after shaking a, after shaking a can for two minutes this is so you spray you get and then you go and then stop then you're exactly the same going the other way Stop. Psst, 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 psst. A bit like that. Excuse me, silly sound effects, but so that's how you do it. You make sure you get all the edges as well. 
and you would hold the can approximately 20 to 25 centimeters away from your away from your project because you don't really want to get thick coverage and it's because it'll just start running and it'll just look a mess so um, you leave about 15 to 20 minutes depending on the paint on the spray paint you use but 15 to 20 in a room that's about 21 degrees that's for your best drying and then yeah you go pss, 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 until you've done all your and then you do all your parts of a primer so I'll show you a picture when I've done the primer Now the primer you haven't really got going too thick really, just something to um, get the paint to stick to. But you know you want a nice coverage all over the place. And while the primer was drying, after it's I think I've done like three light coats on it and just let it dry. That's what I've done. Other people may disagree but I've done three light coats. Um, while they were dry, uh, drying, I looked for the logo that I wanted to use and the lettering. So what I did for this, I will explain right now. So for the Batman logo, what I done was I went on to Google, other web browsers are available. I found a Batman logo that I wanted to use. I took a screenshot of it on my phone. And then I put my phone onto Neverlock. Got a bit of um, decorating tape. And just traced it out. Traced it out. And it ended up looking like that. Then all I done then was took my precision knife, which I have here, and just cut it out. So that is what I've done to get my logo. And I've done the same for the writing that I'm going to show you later as well, the same technique. Now once I cut that logo, the logo out for Batman, what I done was um, I gave the face plate, uh, the face plate, a only the top, only like um, from say the anal halfway across the D pad upwards, I done it yellow with a nice bright yellow. Um, and I gave that about three, maybe four coats of a nice yellow so it really stood out because that's what I wanted it to do, to really stand out. So I will show you some pictures of that. Then with the yellow I also I spray painted um, that little bit that I showed Jimmy taking off wherever I put it. Um, yeah, don't know where it went, somewhere on the bench. So I sprayed that bit yellow. I sprayed the analog stick, uh, sorry, D pad yellow. I sprayed the little, um, I, I spray painted the um, the sink button yellow and the battery, the um, back battery case. I sprayed that yellow. Um, so that's what I done in yellow. And then I started on once the yellow on the face plate, uh, face plate, plate, sorry, had dried. I then started putting on 
spraying the purple that I wanted and I love this purple I think it's absolutely beautiful but so oh sorry um, before I sprayed it purple I placed my logo where I wanted it which you'll see in a minute where it is and so I stuck that down because obviously as I explained I traced it on decorating tape cut it you know I, I told you I'd cut it out so yeah then I just stuck it where I wanted it and then I started spraying the purple um, I gave the purple about I think I gave it four coats of the purple um, just to get that real nice effect that I wanted and I also sprayed the back grips purple got the writing that I wanted um, which I explained how I done obviously the same way as I've done the logo got the writing placed it onto the um, grips and then once that was on the grips I then sprayed them the grips yellow the same yellow as I sprayed all them little bits that I told you I sprayed with yellow um, so once that was all done I will show you a picture so then once the um, purple had dried and the yellow and the and the yellow had dried I then tore off the I then just um you know peeled off the logo which come off really easy I peeled off the the writing that I had done obviously I'm going to show you now um, but I peeled that off and I started to apply a finisher to it and the finisher I gave that a good three coats I do believe well yeah I think it was three coats so I used a finisher you can use a lacquer because that will also do the same job as long as it's a hard wearing lacquer which most of them are I have a spray can you can use that as well so you can use either I have used either before and I've had no problems with it but um, yeah so once and then obviously once you've done, used the finisher on it and you put your final coat you just don't want to touch it then for 24 hours you just, just want to leave it just to dry because if you put pressure on it you'll start putting fingerprints in it and you know, all things like that and it'll just look awful so I'm going to clear this junk out of the way reposition the camera and I'm going to show you the final product but as I said it's not been reassembled because if you want to see the controller reassembled there's thousands out there online as I said I'll probably make one but I'm just not doing it and plus the um, finisher, finisher hasn't dried anyway so I will bring you back to show you So here we go, here is the face plate with the Batman logo and that lovely purple, there's the back of the controller. I did forget to say that when you spray make sure you take these springs out, just push them in and just slide them out. The back grips. Batman. DC. There's a little front bit I was telling you about. Analog stick. Uh, analog. Analog. D pad. Sorry. Battery case. and the little sync button
So that is what I've done. I do hope you all like it. My very own custom Batman controller. Um, thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.